of Identity Check. I am your host, Tim Rose, and I'm so excited that you have come and spent your little time to come and be with me. I really appreciate it. Um, I know our time is very valuable, something we cannot get back, and you spend it with me, it just makes my heart warm. So um, this is just an opportunity for uh, to, to use music to, to dig deeper into who we are. Um, it's kind of just my journey and I'm sharing it with you and I hope you get something out of it. Let me know. You can inbox me or respond in the chat, um, on what, you know, speaks to you and if it relates to you and how you enjoy. So, um, today we're going to go over Peter and ah, I love Peter. Peter is so inspirational, um, to me. I think that he definitely has, um, some wonderful qualities and I always look to him, uh, whenever I'm taking a leap of faith, um, I kind of look to him as like my big brother to get some get some feedback on on how I should do this thing. So here's the song. Let's get right on into it. <laughs> get into Peter first before I get into the song I want to get into Peter so I really like Peter I like Peter for a few reasons the first is that he was authentically himself Peter was boisterous he was a ride or die he was about that life he had that sword baby and he you know he wasn't gonna take no stuff um but he was loyal he was supportive um he was convicted and very um very staunch very um uh, stable and unmovable in his belief. Like he was for Jesus. He's like, where you go, I'm gonna go. You die, I'm gonna die. Like he was about that life, right? Um, so I really appreciate that. And so much to the point that Jesus appreciated it too. Um, because all throughout the gospels, 
Jesus is always calling Peter to be Peter. He's not calling him to be anything else. So Peter was a fisherman. He had his business. He understood, you know, how to fish and, and that those things. So Jesus called upon him multiple times to go out there and get some fish. Fish for the people. Fish for us, right? Um, he was, you know, boisterous and, and very much himself. And Jesus was the one that pulled him aside and said, okay, everybody's saying I'm this person. Well, who you say I am? Because he had gotten the revelation. And it was upon, he said, um, you know who you are. You know who I am. Upon this revelation that you know who I am, I'm building my church. That we, that I see you and you see me, that this is what the church is about. Intimacy, right? And so that's, he started that with Peter. You know, Peter is who he he talked to um, that about. Um and so, and Peter was always learning because he turned right back around and was like, you know, you ain't about to die. You know, <laughs> he like, I rebuke you. So like Peter was coming into the knowledge of who he was. He had some high moments. He had some low moments, but that's life, right? You get to see that life, right? And so I love Peter's life for that because it's very real, very um, transparent and very close to my own. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, he he wasn't, he didn't necessarily need Jesus to, he's very proactive. He didn't need Jesus to give him step by step every moment of the way. He was in this boat. Let's get, we go into the song now. He was in this boat in a storm with his 12 disciples, his brothers, right? And all of them had this opportunity to ask Jesus to come out on this water. But Peter was like, hey, if Jesus is there, I'm there. I'm going to this water. I'm I'm going to do whatever he doing. He walking on the water. I want to do that too. And I love that because he had a limitless thought process. Like he, whatever he saw his father do, he saw Jesus or, you know, his, his, his leader, the Messiah. Um, when he saw him, when he saw that this was a possibility, oh, I want it, you know? And so I have really been thinking about that in my own personal life. Like a lot of times when it comes to God, I'm, you know, kind of meek and mad. Like, okay, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. But I'm not like, hey, I want to do this. Like, I want to do that. And so I used to be that way. But, you know, you have some disappointments and it just kind of pushes you down. But I'm, I'm getting back to that because that's important. For us to be our whole authentic self. And I think when I, when I was like, okay, finally, I'm going to give my life to Christ. We have these ideas of what that's supposed to look like and how our life is supposed to look. And so I was like, okay, well, then it means that I can't do this no more. I can't be, you know, these, I can't be this part of myself, you know, all of these, these ideas. But God was like, girl, I created you in my image. So I want all of you and the parts of you that you know, you don't need any more. Those were never yours anyway. They'll fall off. The lightness, the light will come, convict those pieces. You won't even have those desires anymore. And you'll desire to be who I called you to be. And that means that it may not look like the next person. Everybody's call is different. Everybody's purpose is different. He talks about the body of Christ. So, you know, um, uh, it talks about the body of Christ. The, you know, the eyes don't do the same thing as the feet. Um, so it says we're all like parts of the body. So you have to understand that if we are constantly aligning ourselves, if we got an eyeball and we try to align ourselves with the pinky, it ain't gonna look the same. We ain't got the same perspective. We don't have the same function. Um, we don't have the same ability. So don't align yourself with anybody. Find out who you are and do it and be great. And it's okay, even if other people don't understand it, because the eye is not going to understand what the pinky does, because it can't it can't phantom that. It's sitting in a socket. And this pinky got to move. It's got joints. It's, you know, helping the hand grab things. Something that the eyes, it, it can't even begin to phantom what it looks like. It can think about it because it kind of see it, so it has a perspective, but it doesn't understand. So don't be... Um, and, I, and this is something that I'm learning, that I just have to be, the things that God put in me are for me to express. And those things that aren't, that life put in me, 
he'll, you know, his light shines. And I just accept the truth, and the truth will be what it is. Um, so we don't have to make it too difficult. We just get to be our whole self. And the last thing um, with Peter in this song is like, <sighs> two, well, two things. So Peter, first he was like, hey, I won't come. And then when he came, it was a little bigger than what he thought it was going to be. Um, but that's life. Our, the way, with, with our faith, with what we do, it's always bigger than what we expect it to be. It's always more, um, and it's causing more of us than we thought it would require. But that's how it is, because without God, all things are, you know, it's impossible without God. That's It says that in the scripture. Um, and so, if we were able to get out there and do it all, why would we need God? It's a partnership. So, a lot of times we take those leaps of faith, it's big, it's overwhelming, and it doesn't quite pan out because we look to our own self for um, that reassurance to get, you know, get it done. But I want to admonish you because I'm doing the same thing. I ain't asking you to do nothing that I ain't doing. Um, I want to admonish you to take a leap again. The other story about Peter is after Jesus died. Peter was sad, man. He like, this did not turn out the way I thought it was. That was the Messiah. He, or, he died and resurrected him. Let me correct that. Um, he's like, man, I thought he was going to take over the government. I thought he was going to free our people. You know, I thought it was going to look this certain way. I don't understand. Um, and now what do I do? I've been with this man for three years. Like my whole life, I... I paused my whole life to be with this man and now he's gone and he's kind of just like it's all of these feelings and all these emotions and it's just like what do I do now how do I do this what do I do with life I mean I got these teachings and I understand this truth but is it real like what you know I don't understand and I can relate to that because you know that's what's happened in my life you know I have been a Christian since I was eight years old uh, before then was, it, you know, very heavily in the church. So God has never not been a part of my life, but it's like, you know, it didn't quite work the way I thought it was going to work. Like, so where am I at now? And God is like, listen, <laughs> he out there trying to fish. He like, well, I guess I'm gonna go back to being a fisherman. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get me, go catch me some fish and he gets out there and he works all night and don't find a thing. Now, he's a skilled fisherman. This was his profession. So he understands the process of fishing. He understands when the fish are going to be available, you know, how all these things work. Um, so Jesus came, and, it's, and it specifically says that they were close to the shore. So fish are not close to the shore. When you're fishing, you deep. The fish, is, the fish are out in the deep. They're not right there by the shore. That scares them away. But he was... He was close to the shore when Jesus told him to throw his net back out. After he had already been doing this all night long, he was tired, said he took his clothes off. That's when they fishing, you know, they stripping, they taking clothes off because it's, it's hard, heavy work. Um, and so you, you could tell he's been doing this all night. He's tired. He's exhausted every opportunity that could ever be an opportunity. And here comes Jesus saying, do the impossible. Come close to the shore and throw your net out on the right side of the boat. And he was like, all right. And he does it and he gets the very thing that he's looking for. And so, and then he's like, hey, <laughs> I get it now. I understand. You are God. You are the one. And you are giving me what I need. Always. It was a it was a perspective change from him. It was a shift, not just having an idea of who uh, Jesus was and what he was doing on the earth, but understanding the truth. It came full circle for him at that moment. He's like, okay, you the Messiah. Like, this is it. You were God here on this earth. I understand it. I understand this shift, what you are here to do. You, you're fulfilling the scripture. It just looks different than I thought it was going to look, but you're doing it. He understood that. Um, and so not only did God give him the provision, of the fish in that moment he tired he been working all night then he gave him nourishment he had bread and fish ready for breakfast for him to eat so 
that really spoke to me because, you know, we go through things and we don't think we're going to quite get where we need to be. Um, but try again because Jesus never fails us. And with him, all things are possible. So that's what I got out of Peter. And share with me and tell me what you get out of Peter's life. All right. I'll talk to y'all next week. See ya. <laughs>